to Razmafsar TV. Today I'm going to show you a Khanda uh, sword made in India. It's a reproduction sword. Uh, Khanda means a double-edged or Khanda double-edged uh, sword with a flaring tip and it has a handle made of steel with a knuckle guard and it is as you can see gilded gold overlaid in floral design and geometric design. The scabbard is made of wood covered with blue velvet and also scabbard fittings you see they're blue and brownish and have the gold overlaid sunflower typical of uh, many Indian arms and armor. Um, the handle is really beautiful as you can see. Today Indians can make steel these handles and also beautifully design them. Uh, the blade is patterned welded steel made of welded steel and it has an inscription. The inscription reads Ke Qazi Shah or Qazi Shah Farzand Delband Zulfagoras, meaning uh, the king warrior is the dear um, dear child of uh, Zulfagar, the legendary sword Zulfagar, of course. That's what it's referring to. And uh, the inscription also reads Amale Asadullah Esfahan, which is a reference to the legendary Persian smith Asadullah Esfahan. Back then, he was really estimated, revered, and as today, many places. It has also another inscription, and the inscription means uh, reads uh, Velayat Abbas Ali, trusteeship of Abbas Ali or kingdom of Abbas Ali. It has also a geometric design uh, cartouche on the blade. Blade is patterned welded steel, not as visible the pattern as the toolbar I showed you before. Again, it has an edge, but not a keen edge. And I explained to you that in today's India, the newly made swords are not meant or shouldn't have a keen edge. And uh, as the legislation in many countries is, at, or in some countries is at the moment, but this can this is can be sharpened easily, right? Because it has already an edge. If needed, of course. I mean, this question is always uh, how sharp would you like a uh, sword to be? I mean, Oriental swords, Indian like Persian, like Japanese, tend to be sharp, right? Um, but I'm sure you can even do cutting tests with it, just to put it in perspective. The blade is um, heavy. I mean, Kanda blades are tend to be heavier because they're tip heavy delivering devastating cuts, but still, I think they could have made this blade lighter by polishing more uh, the, some meat away from the blade, right? But still, if you're strong, you will not have problems with in handling it. But as I, you see that I do different rounds of handling the sword, like three minutes, five minutes, then one minute break, and then again and again, this, you can feel it. Uh, if you're strong, have muscles you can of course handle the sword but normally it's better that swords are lighter for maneuvering many techniques of shamshir can be done with it of course what i'm doing here i'm not a, an expert in kanda but many of these blades in the region or in general you can use and transfer techniques to many blades as we all know in swordsmanship but um, you know this uh, strike, which is a typical Shamshiri strike, where I come to the th thrusting uh, position or I threaten with the tip and then come back and cut. This can be done much better with the Shamshir. But with this Kanda, although it's, as I mentioned it to you, meant to deliver heavy cut, you can also trust in a straight line. Of course, in a straight line, much more effectively than a curved blade, but the curved blade can trust over the shield, under the shield, or just across the body. So it's always a trade-off, different blades, different purposes or preferences. So that's uh, this Honda I just wanted to show you because uh, I think it's a good idea to show more and more also blades from India on this channel. And there are many places in India today where they make swords. I wanted to share two of them with you here.
for visiting our channel. Please subscribe to us and ask any questions you might have. Have a nice day.